Hello and welcome to Gladys Cake Kitchen. In today's video, I am going to be putting the hand mixer and the stand mixer to test and we'll be bringing you the result of completing a bake using either of these equipment. This is because in a previous video linked up here, I recommended some tools and equipment that would be useful for a beginner bake. Uh, in the same video, I also noted the limitations that may come with using a hand mixer in that a hand mixer can be greatly limiting in the quantity of bakes that can be undertaken at a particular time and may be inefficient for the completion of certain recipes. However, for a beginner baker, the question can always be, do you need a stand mixer or a hand mixer? So in this video, I am putting these two to test. I'll be completing a whole recipe using either a stand mixer and a hand mixer. I will be bringing you the results so that you can make up your mind at the end of the video, whether as a beginner baker, you need a hand mixer or a stand mixer. So without having to waste your time, join me in this video whilst we get on this exciting experiment. Over here, I have the same amount of ingredients and we'll be using the same processes and creaming time for completing the bake. The only difference will be the use of a hand mixer for one recipe and a stand mixer for the other. Also, the tools used here are the same recommended in the video linked in the card above and in the description box below. For details of the recipe, ingredients, tips, notes and extra resources, please check the description box below. On completion of the bake, I will be looking at the appearance and quality of the bake, crumb integrity, baking problems if there was any and overall effect the equipment had on the outcome of the bake. Firstly, in a mixing bowl, I'll add some sugar, stock, margarine and vanilla, which I'll cream with a hand mixer for a minute and a half, starting from slow to medium. On this hand mixer, medium speed is between the numbers two and three. After creaming for a minute and a half, I stop to scrape the bowl and continue for another minute whilst observing a change in the consistency of the mixture. After a total time of two and a half minutes of creaming, I add in the eggs, ensuring it's incorporated into the creamed mixture. Observe I did not slow down the hand mixer at this point. This will be significant to the outcome in the end, but after mixing in the eggs for about another minute, I stop the hand mixer altogether and add in the flour and milk. I do this by hand alternating the milk and flour. When the flour and milk are mixed in, I return the hand mixer to mix the butter together for 10 seconds and then transfer the butter into a pre-lined baking tin wrapped in a DIY baking strip. The tins I'm using here is the PME 5-inch tins baking at 4 inch deep. There's more information about baking strips in the description box below, so please do check that out. I stamp the tin on the work table to rid of air bubbles and make a hole in the middle before I set to bake in a preheated fan-assisted oven for any time between 55 minutes to an hour and 10 minutes at 170 degrees Celsius. Next, with the same processes and time of creaming, I start a second batch of butter using a stand mixer. I cream margarine, sugar and vanilla together, adding eggs, mixing the flour and milk by hand before setting to mix together and then set in the oven to bake. And now here is the moment of truth. The cakes are done now, but can you tell which cake is made with a hand mixer and which one is of the stand mixer? I'll reveal that in a moment, but in the meantime, both cakes are similar in appearance with a slight dome on both of them and some evenness on the crust. Observe that the cake on the left has a slightly browner crust and a larger pale line closer to the top, whilst the cake on the right has a lighter, delicate looking crust with a small pale line closer to the top. Both cakes also stand in at four inches tall after baking. The cake to the left is the cake made with a hand mixer and the cake to the right is completed with a stand mixer. So far, observe no distinct differences in the bakes at all. I realize that browning on the cake made with a hand mixer may have been due to the accidental turning of the oven knob higher than necessary before realizing later. But for both cakes, I anticipated a lighter crust due to the use of baking strips, but the result may have been due to the single sheet I used in making the baking strip. Slicing into both cakes, I observe there is tunneling. Remember when I didn't slow down the hand mixer? Yes, tunneling is sometimes caused by over whipping too much air into the butter and over beating the eggs. 
and because I didn't slow down the hand mixer, I kept the same variation in the stand mixer and unsurprisingly, the tunneling appears exactly the same on both cakes. In essence, the outcome has more to do with the process than the equipment, but more on that some other time. The crumb on both cakes are delicate to touch and even though there is tunneling in the cakes, both are cooked. There is a difference to observe between tunneled cakes and cakes that are undercooked in the middle, but this will be tackled in a future video. The dome on both cakes, despite the use of baking strips, may be due to insufficient space in the tin. I realize now the cakes may have baked better and expanded in a six inch tin rather than the five inch I used, but I'll correct this in a future video. For now, if you're a beginner baker who has just begun on this journey and only have a hand mixer to hand, be encouraged to use it efficiently. The stand mixer obviously has some disadvantages over a hand mixer, which I have outlined in this video earlier, but at the core of baking, understanding the science and following the baking process diligently will yield you better results than fancy equipment. And this has been observed in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. So if you're a beginner baker who cannot afford yourself a stand mixer just yet, I hope you find your hand mixer useful enough to complete some recipes and in due course, you may be able to afford yourself a stand mixer. For more videos to help you level up your baking skills, check here. And for more experiments and fixes videos, check the video next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video.